In the last video, I introduced probability, giving an overall sense for what we mean by the term, and giving a sense for how the outcomes of an experiment can be described probabilistically. In this video, I want to make this idea of probability a bit more operational by moving into random variables. A random variable is a function that takes elements from the sample space and converts them into real numbers if they're not already real numbers. So in math speak, x is a random variable if it takes elements from our sample space, our original sample space, and takes them into the real numbers. But this probability space actually gets induced into a related probability space that we can actually work with. Namely, s are the elements of x that, um, that the random variable x took the original elements of the sample space and converted into real numbers. x is the set of all subsets of s, and p of x is the probability measure that we use to describe probabilities on this sample space. Why we like to use random variables instead of just using raw probability is that random variables are numbers. And so we can take averages, we can take uh, squared averages, we can do all sorts of different things with those, with those numbers. We can describe more things once we have a random variable because we can take averages, take medians, um, and this really makes a lot more sense. Okay, so let's imagine that we toss a coin, um, and then the, out, the, the sample space that we would have there is that it either comes up heads or tails. But we can't really do it very much with heads and tails. We have to convert these, these letters into numbers because the numbers are actually something where we can bring math to bear. So here's one, one possible random variable. Uh, the outcome of the random variable is zero if the realization of the experiment was heads, and it's one if the realization of the experiment was tails. Suppose that we have three people who take a test. And we observe the three people, the names of these three people, as well as the amount of time that each of them takes on, on this exam. And so what our, what our sample space would be, would be pairs of names, uh, so Jim and the amount of time Jim took, Will, the amount of time Will took, and Jacob, and the amount of time that Jacob took. And that's going to be uh, the sort of the Cartesian product between these, these three names and this, uh, this interval from zero to infinity is going to be our sample space. Now there are a variety of different random variables that we could define based on this original sample space. For example, let's take x1, which we will define to be the total amount of time that the three individuals spend. So then what we'll do is we'll observe what, how long it takes Will, how long it takes Jim, how long it takes Jacob, add the three together, and that will be x1. And that's just going to be a number between zero and infinity. So x1 was total amount of time, and it was on a continuous interval. x2, we're going to define as the number of individuals who take longer than 60 minutes to complete the exam. Now this could be zero, everyone could finish before 60 minutes. It could be one, it could be either Will, Jim, or Jacob, or it could be two, or it could be three. So this is going to be on a discrete number of points uh, that could be possible, and that's what we're going to call a discrete random variable. The first one, which was on a continuum, could take on a continuum of values, we're going to call a continuous random variable. This distinction between continuous and discrete random variables, uh, we can see it came from the same experiments. It's not going to be something fundamental about the experiment. It's something fundamental about the random variable. Um, and the next thing is that we want to point out about this is that the distinction between continuous and discrete will have implications for how we describe what probabilities these uh, random variables take on. Uh, so we, we'll, uh, we'll discuss that a bit more in the next video, but you know, in this video you can see sort of a clear distinction between the two types of random variables. And we could define a whole host of other random variables. For example, let's define x3 as the average time taken. And so we have three random variables, all from the same experiment. Uh, we could define a whole bunch of random variables. Let's say we can define k random variables um, just by sort of imagining different, uh, different outcomes from this experiment. We could look just at what happens with Will. We could look at just what happens 
Jim, what happens to Jacob, and get a whole bunch of different random variables. They're likely to be related. They may be unrelated, uh, but the point is, but the point is that we can define a whole host of random variables from just this same experiment. Now that is going to be the idea of what we're going to call a random vector. Now a random variable took uh, took the outcomes of an experiment and converted them into one real number. Uh, a random vector takes the outcomes of an experiment and converts them into a whole bunch of different real numbers. And so, uh, if you want to think about a random vector, it takes the sample space and takes it into a, a k-dimensional vector of real numbers. Uh, so, for example, if we wanted an example of a random vector, well, we've already defined three random variables from the same experiment. We could define a random vector as a vector containing these three random variables. So, there's reason to think that each of these elements is related, and in fact, that's a big reason why we're going to go into the analysis of random vectors, is that we're going to be able to analyze relationships among the various elements of these random vectors, and that's going to be a big part of econometrics. So this analysis of what is a random variable, what is a random vector, and how do we work with them is going to be fundamental to moving on to our, our study of econometrics.